Cool. And talking about Sinek, he's the unsung hero. We mentioned this, I think, during Super Week and during Week 9. He's all, he, he's one of the most consistent players of Fnatic, but he so often feeds all the kills to his teammates mm. that he, he goes ve unnoticed for, for very long periods of time. So let's have a look at the bands. Shen's being taken away. Leona and Twisted Fate also. Does mean that it could be Kassid and available. So is Kazix as well. Kazix, yep. big chap. We I mean, you don't want to let Alex in on Kazix. That's a fact, guys. So I imagine Fnatic, if they're not going to ban it, they may first pick it. Being yep. on the blue side, they're going to have that option available. The fact that he's banned, it means that Zed would probably be my next point of contention here for Gambit. That's where they should be thinking to, you know, you know, remove, take that away. Instead, they are going to decide to take Nasus away. So if Zed gets locked in, and we've talked about this a lot, you can go for the likes of Oriana, you can go for the likes of Lulu, Kale, those sorts of champions to count to pick that, uh, you know, burst potential. And like you said, Kasten slipped through, so he is also available if these teams want to pick it. So let's see what they go with, though, for first picks. It has been Nasus a number of times. It's Elise is in there as well. Could be a choice. We saw Soaz. Uh, actually, it's, it wasn't so as it's N-rated, I think, that ran it the other day. So Elise is going to be another champion that you, you can put in different positions. In terms of junglers... It was Soaz a lot. It, it, he did it so much so damage, was, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, correct. Twenty-five percent. He was playing yeah. top lane and went full AP. Um, in terms of your junglers, you had Volibear left available as well as Udia, which you've seen Diamond Prox running. So instead, Sinai's decided to go with Jarvan, who he played in game mm. one yesterday to very good effect. Zach is still available as well. So this is another pick that we've seen yesterday. We've seen from Soaz and. The combo was very, very good. The amount of knockups that you can get from, you know, the Jarvan combo, from the Elastic Slingshot, from the Let's Bounce, like, it, it's a, a crowd control effect you cannot mitigate or reduce. Well, let's sort of see whether Darian goes on to Elise. Let's do... I don't want to be mean. I don't want to be mean. But he doesn't tend to do that well when he's on Elise. So we said this yesterday as well. A mere 106 deaths in 28 games. Uh, it's about 30 more than all of the other top four respective top laners, which is a lot at this level of the game. And we do talk about it a lot. He does tend to get caught out. He does tend to be a little bit overextended. And Elise is one of the champions that you do have a little bit more safety with. You can use that repel to the neutral camps. And we've seen him build quite uniquely with him. But with the champions that are there, I don't know where they're going. I, I, I don't know about you, but I'm excited right now. Yes. Because this is potentially Diamond Prox on Zach. Or potentially... Or, or Darian. Oh, yeah, exactly. Now, you've, you've got this position where Elise could be in Diamond Fox's hands in the jungle, could be in Darian's hands in the top lane, could be in Edward's hands in the support. Zach could be Darian in the top lane, could be Diamond Fox in the jungle. And Fnatic are going, well, guys, who scrimmed, who scrimmed Gambit? Did you talk to them? <laughs> did, did they say anything? Did anyone like, do this? Does anyone know what they were doing? You know, what was, what was the decision? So we'll see where they, you know, once we get a few more champions locked in, we'll know where they're going. But Zed and Cassidy are still available. So uh, those are two. Plus Kale, I think, might be another one to be considered. Far as looking like it might get selected for Yellow Star, just as I big him up for playing other champions. Looks like Varus is going to be the number one uh, AD carry once again. We've seen a lot of Varus this weekend as well. And, and again, if you do combo with those CC compositions, you know, uh, with now, for example, now the Jarvan and the Zyra, you've just got all the time in the world. The knock-up comes up from Zyra, the chain spreads to everybody, the Cataclysm locks them in. What I think they would be lacking a little bit right now is AoE damage. They're going to need a little bit more if they want to, you know, really combo this. And Rumble would probably be my pick for the top lane if I were Fnatic. But we'll see how Gambit decides to react to this one. Oh, we're going to have... Potentially a support, of course, that at least could be Edward, but I'm trying to think whether it be Sona, maybe. That tends to be the champion they fall back on. And actually, it's funny because, you know, of, despite the fact, yeah, the graphic, we've all seen it. Uh, it's actually not Edward's choice to go on Sona. It's always Alex that forces him onto it. Yes, he no. said it is like, I, I pref would prefer to do the others, but Alex considers that so much utility from that champion yep. that they cannot look past that crescendo. It's so good in a team fight. And not only just that, each of the auras as well. It's mm. such an underrated ability. All the additional attack damage and, you know, defensive statistics, the healing, the movement speed buff once you eventually scale points into it. It's a very, very utility heavy champion. So it's one that y you always forget about that little bit. In the end, Zed has been picked up by Alexic. And He's such a good player on Zed. Yesterday, I still remember that top lane 1v3, where he still picked up a kill onto SK, you know, running away from the entire team. Well, are we going to see a Kale possibly to come out and counter that? There has been the, the counter in the past that they've used. Oh, my word, I'd be so excited if that happened, but uh, it's not going to. I'm not expecting it myself. It could actually work, to be honest, because you've against got a lot of... Against Zed? Uh, well, not against no Zed. Way. In, in a team fight power, 1v1... Look, 1v1 Zed's going to be any caster, right? End of story. Yeah. But when you've got the team fight power that you can lock people in place and you can zone them out, and you think of all the other AoE, it's very, very good. I do expect Rumble to get locked in. 
Whether it's going to be mid or top lane Rumble and mid or top lane Cannon, this is going to be the question for me. But it's just AoE. This is a press R comp from Fnatic. And if anybody doesn't get it, you know, their abilities landed, they may not have the damage to kill it. So the final choice will be Edwards. And it could well be some support or it could be a jungler. I would love to see a Janna right now. If you put a Janna in this composition, that would just completely destroy Fnatic. At any time they wanted to jump in, you get rid of them. If it's going to be Nunu instead, a similar sort of role, but less effective in my mind, because you're not going to have that counter initiation, what, uh, which would be very, very effective. They got a lot of damage sources with everybody. Actually, everybody's a damage source on both of these teams so far, if, especially if Edward's playing Sona. But I, I feel like they're going to need some sort of defense right now. Well, there it is, the Sona lock-in. So that are the teams, and let's see where they shuffle around to. Of course, they've got 60 seconds to move into any position. As it stands, you could potentially have Zyra. would expect to be the support here. Almost certainly will get switched across. It is sitting on Peke right now. There we go. It's gone yeah. for twin rated. So, it is going to be Kennen looking like it's going to be in that mid lane. So, that'll be Peke versus a Z. A Kennen versus Z. Interesting counter. Now, that's actually not too bad of a counter because of the fact you can get multiple stuns out within relatively short succession. So what you can do is, as you see Zed coming in towards you, as long as you get those, you know, marks of lightning down, you can apply the stun and just book it. Put your tail between your legs and run as far as possible the opposite direction. If Zed carries on chasing, you pop your ultimate on, you get stunned a second time, and in theory, you may be able to disrupt his attack. So that's what Peck is going to be banking on. If, however, Alex can stick to him, that little hamster is going to get blown up. <laughs> and there is the zoomed-in Fnatic bracelet of N-rated. Got to keep that sweatband on, man. This is a sport, after all. And it does look like, yes, it's going to be Diamond Prox on Zach, ladies and gentlemen. They switched it at the last minute. Darian will be on Elise. So we're going to finally see a jungle Zac. This is actually the first jungle Zac we've had in the uh, European LCS. Yes, so we've seen him a multiple, multitude of times, you know, over from the Asian scene. Uh, is this week in particular, watching the OGN, we've seen him a very good number of times. I don't believe he's been played top lane over at OGN at all, but I have missed a couple games, so I stand to be corrected on that. So that was one thing that always interested me when watching the EU LCS this weekend and seeing him being used as a top laner in Diamond Prox's hands and ganking with that last slingshot this is what I've been waiting for this is what I, I've hoped to see this weekend and it's finally happening in the grand final yes it is the grand final ladies and gentlemen if you are just tuning in you've already missed evil geniuses taking third place in the playoffs securing themselves 15,000 with many many hooks coming out from Crepo creating so many fights he forced me to say that ladies and gentlemen he forced me uh, but this is the grand final nevertheless and if you have just tuned in this is game one Gambit versus Fnatic $50,000 goes to the winner. And that is, more importantly, the pride of taking first place in the European split. Just before the summer comes up, you know, when you're going into that summer season, you can go in going, we are the number one team. We are the guys you want to beat. We are the champions. I'm not going to go for the not rest quite of that. yet. They've got, to, they've, got, they've got to reach the world finals for that one. They've got to have their hands on the big Summoner's Cup. Miniature champions in that case. What I do like out of this, both of these teams, it is just damage, 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 go, go, go from every single champion. In normal terms, Sona might be a defensive support or a sustained support, but in Edward's hands, this is a carry support. He likes to play very aggressive. He likes to get those pokes down. A defensive start from both teams with everybody playing a living, breathing war and just making sure that they don't overstep their bounds. This is a best of five, remember. So as soon as you get that early advantage, it's always going to play into your favor. So there is an invade coming out. Fnatic immediately. Pink Ward fight's already beginning there. And that's two pinks burned already on the map. Edward using his up. Has got another one in his back, and he's going to go back and put it back in towards that push. And they're like, no, back off, son. You can't make this one count. Yeah, think think better of that one. Edward, he was considering going in there and just sort of wait. Hang on a second. Is, is this a ward bait? You know, mate, we, we've seen this before. It, it works in all levels of play. And see, it does wisely decide to back off. And uh, even more exciting, we're going to see straight lane matchups. So it is going to be, you know, the top laners versus top laners and our duo laners versus duos. So we'll see how this pans out and just how effective they can be. Standard meta that everybody at home has played in ranked. And they, well, you're going to know exactly what to come up against. Let's see how the pros do it, though. 
is going to be fantastically played out. Diamond stunning off on the red buff, and we do see Cyanide also on the red buff. He's getting help, though, from N-Rated. Darian going up towards that top lane. He has taken down the golems himself, so should have a bit of an advantage, but we've already seen so as he's been picking up the wolves as well. So kind of back and forward. Could be close. Cyanide going very low to the red buff there. Yeah, he, he tanked that up for a very prolonged period of time. Zyra didn't take any of that damage at all, which would have made him a little bit quick, you know, uh, safer. We do see his diamond procs jumping over the wall, and it's a very small thing to note, but he saves, you know, two or three seconds worth of walking time doing the route in that particular order. If you consider every single time you go for these camps that you can save that time, it adds up to a lot more ganking potential, CS potential. Pink Ward War goes down again, <laughs> and then Rated and uh, Edward are now out of pinks in this bottom lane. Yeah, both out of pinks, using them up very early on in that river. Cyanide does smite down the blue, and he's going to walk across. We see launching across from Diamond there in towards the race, and you know, it adds a lot of versatility to the gank potentials. But Cyanide effectively can do the same, but it's a double mana combo. Correct. So, you know, it's it's also a skill shot combo as well. So if Cyanide is in un under a little bit of pressure with that Jarvan, he runs the risk of being able to miss it. And it's a lot easier to dodge because you see the flag. You know the angle of approach. You can see where he's coming in. The range on that elastic slingshot is 1150 at rank 1, and you can do that from so far out of sight. Oh. Bottom lane, the poke is good. The poke is good, very good back and forward. Power cord coming out from Edward as well and towards Yellow Star. Yellow Star getting a good bit of burn down onto Genja and back and forth. They keep on going. We do see Diamond positioning himself in that top lane, so has not fallen for that at all. He has got a ward in his own top bush, so he will get spotted Diamond as soon as he moves across, which he's probably going to do in just a moment. Taking a bit of lane tax there as well. As the level experience, sorry, melting it away. And actually, that would be an easy tell because Soas would see that level to Darian and he'd say he'd been so much slower than before. He's like, there's someone here. Yeah, exactly. But he is going to charge it up and he's leaped in. Lane tax taken away yep. by Diamond. Says, if I'm going to waste my time up here, I'm going to take your minions. And Darian even taking a tower here. Bit of a mistake, man. Well, in the mid lane, it's going to be Peke taken very, very low there. Alex Hitch finally using that Fortitude pot to get aggressive and just popping him down solo. But Peke is going to avoid the damage. Yeah, so he replied with a Fortitude pot of his own, and he did manage to get the stun down. So they traded Ignite for Flash in that engagement. But that is exactly what Peke needed to do. Land the stun and get to safety. We do see that uh, uh, Diamond was thinking about going for that, you know, dash in, leap over behind the turret and use that percentage HP damage to pick up a kill. Very importantly, Edward is out of mana in this bottom lane, so the sustain is no longer there. The HP that they're sitting on is what they will remain on until Edward can regenerate that uh, mana again. Yeah, and he's got no items, of course. He didn't buy anything, went straight wards, pots, everything he could use, and he's already chugged through it all, so like you mentioned, no mana at all. Can't do any of those Q pokes, which he loves to do. He's going to get rooted up. This may well be first blood here. No! He has to flash away from that hell of our and they're take, turning it around. Yellow Star is taken very low by Genja, though. So there's no potions left for either of the bottom lanes except for N-rated Zyra. And the damage oh. onto Yellow Star, he popped the barrier. Uses the double up, but the barrier saves him. And they are pushed right up on their tower now. Genja, and there is going to be Fnatic backing off to buy. So we'll see how many of these losses Genja can pick up. But that's a 15 CS lead in a, in a lane with no sustain. So they're playing the poke lane very, very well. N-rated and Yellow Star need to continually apply pressure to force Genja to stand back, to miss those last hits. And they're doing a relatively good job of it so far. We'll see if they can keep it up after this first back. So Peke goes back, gets himself some cloth armor as well as a Doran's Blade. So he's going to get himself a little bit more hit points to deal with Alex Hitch's burst. Alex Hitch, meanwhile, he went back and got himself two Doran's Blades. So he's going to be stacking up the damage in there. Interesting to see who manages to land the first foot between those two. Equalizer comes out from Soas, keeping the pressure on this top lane against Darian. Will he back off after buy? No, he's going to make sure he clears out the rest of the lane. Doesn't want to miss out on that 40 gold, which he almost is about to miss out on, but we'll never get to see it. So we'll see now how this pans out. Both junglers moving to war. Towards the top lane, and unfortunately, Jarvan has just backed off as Diamond Prox arrives. And you actually see Diamond, he's placed a ward there down for Darian. So, you know, all of that pressure that Soas was applying, even Gambit were like, This is a little fishy, this doesn't quite add up. And he actually came over to put a ward down himself, but he's jumped on Peke. Alex is going in again. This time, he's going to dive towards the tower. That death mark will go off any moment, but he gets stunned up so well. And Alex is the ignites burning a cyanide. He's going to see if he can slide in. He hasn't got level six, so can he get the cataclysm off this wave? No, he's not. He's not going to be able to dive it. 
perfect example of how you can use that stun to counter Alex Peke. Maybe, maybe running a little lucky there. If he did not have that cloth armor, the damage would probably have been enough to kill him. So good itemization manages to keep him alive. And of course, the potion's ticking through as well. So well played by both champions there. Peke is about to get his ultimate, which means Alex may not be able to get away with that aggressive dive again because the slicing maelstrom will be available. Yeah, let's see. He's going to back off, Alex. Clearing out those wraiths. Red buff is going to be picked back up by Diamond. Hasn't gone for any ganks just yet. Instead, it didn't work out for him in that top lane. We'll have his ultimate available as well. So he could come bouncing into it. Cyanide, the same. He's going to be picking up his red buff. He's going to be looking for kills down in this bottom lane. And immediately we see that ping ward already placed by Enrated, keeping Edward away from getting any wards into that bush. So that may well be a point of contact that Cyanide tries to sneak into. One thing that's very important, they've jumped on Peke. They've jumped straight in there. Have they got enough to take him down? Uses his ultimate, but he's going to be first blood. And who will it go to? It is going to be Alex Itch. The combination with his jungler is just too much for that poor little yodel. It's not over yet. Darian's been hit. He's diving in there. Equalizer was down. The ignite should be enough to take him one more. There it is. Soaz picks up the kill in the top lane. And suddenly it's a straight trade, one for one. And Darian Brock still wants to play. He's charging up that slingshot in the bottom lane. Is he going to go in? He is. He's going to jump into towards Yellow Star, but remember Cyanide is there and it comes sliding in. Have they done enough? They need to take down all those little chunks of Diamond Prox and they will get it. It's Yellow Star that picks up the kill. So they squash the flubber beneath their feet and they pick up some kills, so very well played. First and foremost, in the middle lane, Pekka going down, but he did a lot of counter damage. Once he gets some more safety in the form of that uh, 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 Seeker's Arm Guard and the, the Hourglass eventually, he may survive some of the burst. Top lane, straight up 1v1. So has managed to kill Darian. And in the bottom lane, unfortunately, because uh, Jarvan Science, Cyanide's Jarvan was nearby, that gank turned sour. So 2 to 1 at the end of it, and a thousand gold lead for Fnatic. Speaking of lanes turning sour, Yellow Star starting to build up a pretty hefty lead over Genja here. 26 CS, you can see he's just forcing him away from that turret. They may well try and take you down, or will they just want to stay this lane a little bit longer because Genja is suffering here? So they're not forcing the lane down, and for that exact reason, if you can deny Genja those items uh, as for as long as possible, you prolong the suffering, it's obviously going to give you that advantageous position. So it's already grown to a 30 CS lead, and we'll probably see more ganks from Diamond Prox or maybe even Alex coming down there to try and kill the squishy champion. So as appears to have the better of Darian right now, throwing those harpoons back in towards him, did overheat a little bit there. So effectively silencing himself for a sh short period of time. Darian pretty much sitting on his own turret, has got the Sorcerer's Boots, so we'll start to do a bit more damage. Man's the land, the cocoon, immediately sinks the fangs in towards Soas, but turns around and again overheats himself. He's not quite able to just keep that balance at the moment and keep the damage flowing. Darian is going to get caught out, but Edward, meanwhile, down in this bottom lane, he's going to be the crescendo, wow. the bullet time combined. Is it enough? Yes, it is. End rate goes down, that passive's going to come out, but Yellow Star's going to drop as well. It's going to be surely be a double oh. kill. The barrier isn't enough. The snipe was from the passive event rate. He took down Edward and Genja still didn't have enough to take down Yellow Star. Support on support action. They've caught the spider out. Have they though? He repels away, but he's going to get dropped. The cataclysm comes out, but in comes Diamond Prox launching Let's himself bounce. in. He's going to try and bounce his way around, but it's not going to be enough. Hasn't got the damage in there. No, not at all, unfortunately. And he was afraid of taking on two. If that flame splitter had turned on to him, he probably would have been squashed quite quickly, especially because his abilities cost his own life. And those little bloblets, if you step on them, you can kill them and prevent him getting that life back. Peke is taking a lot of harassment from Alex in this mid lane. He's definitely getting poked around. He has just gone snuck around and took his rates away, Alex. So he's farming out very well compared to Peke. Definitely keeping the pressure on. You can see he's got that blue buff on as well. And again, Peke almost diveable right now, but he's just so fearful of those stuns that Peke managed to land in the first engagement. Instead, Alex backs off. He's going to clear another wave of raids. He's definitely stacking out. No, it's all right. He's just going to clear out the mid lane. So we're going to carry on farming and CSing. A very good job by Alex. He's pulled himself a little bit ahead as far as CS. And it will probably continue that trend for the next couple of minutes. And in terms of just the action, whenever it happens, it happens in every single lane at the same time. So the game is very very chaotic at the moment, but look at the damage. You see Jarvan is nearby. Peke was thinking about going in there, but there's no Cataclysm available. No, just wants to keep the poke on him. Does stun him on the turret, but the turret is not hitting him. And he realizes it puts the death mark down. Does manage to get him, but he's going to be Alexic going down in the process. So it was a one for one with Cyanide picking up the assist. Yeah, so one for one at the end of the day. I think Peke was hoping to get the assist down before the death mark landed, but it wasn't to be. So 
at the end of the day, the trade does come out in Fnatic's favor, thanks to that assist gold, obviously helping them out. And obviously, we'll see how that pans out. He's got that Seeker's On God plus a Ruby Crystal completed. So he's going to have that additional armor stacking up and the survivability from that additional health. We've seen Diamond poking in the mid lane, but down this bottom lane, we do see Genji getting rooted up again. Yellowstar not going to follow through on this one. And Edward does get that power cord back out combo on towards Yellowstar, just keeping him at bay. But you can see he's just going to get chugging through any little health pot that he has remaining. And the Bilge Water Cutlass, of course, with the lifesteal that that is giving, he's definitely going to be just regaining that health. He's already back to max. And there's something that you have to give props to in this bottom lane, and that's Enrated's Roots. He's snared either Genji or Edward so many times in this laning phase already that it's the reason they're winning this one. He lands the CC, Yellowstar deals the damage, and it costs Genji the CS. And that's pretty much the rinse and repeat that they continue doing. Take a moment to look at the numbers across the board. Mid lane, still that very small advantage for Alexic. And in the top lane, the small advantage for Soaz, plus that kill and assist. In terms of gold, the numbers aren't that far apart right now, with the exception of Genji in the bottom lane. And yeah, Soaz is also tipping the scales in that top lane, just a little. 500 gold, definitely starting to go a little bit more, but Edward gets caught rooted up again, and those plants doing some work on towards Edward. Has managed to get that ward down. Try and keep Enrated away from that bush and give Genja a little bit of time to get that farm back going. Has fell behind. He's going to go for that Bloodthirster at the start, I feel. Something he tends to go to, but he did pick up the pickaxe this time around. So maybe he's just thinking, I can't quite get there quick enough. There's going to be another ultimate coming out. Soaz with the equalizer straight on towards Darien. Darien's not going to be able to escape this one. Does land the cocoon, but Soaz immediately flashes in. Flame Spitter work, doing work, and takes Darien down on the turret once again. Soaz has got Darien's number completely. He's simply using Rumble to its absolute perfect perfection right now. And he's managed to take Darien out 1v1 on two separate occasions. So we'll see if this trend does continue. Darien is a champion that does tend to give away a few more death Alex has dive moment. in the middle. He's got the death mark down. He just about caught a glimpse of it, but he didn't go full on aggressive. And now he's got stunned up, but unfortunately the turret wasn't doing the damage. Bullet time in the bottom though, and he's just bouncing all over him. Yellowstar gonna get dropped here. This Diamond Proxer picks up the kill and now N rated forced away. While that's all happening, the top turret goes down and Fnatic keeping the pressure on. We'll see whether or not Gambit are actually able to secure a dragon if they want to force it. They've killed 80 carry in the bottom lane. They're going to have a four man on dragon. And we said this yesterday. Darien dies, Gambit gets dragon. Darien dies, Gambit gets a tower. We'll see how this pans out because they've lost Darien's tower in the top lane. And it does look like there's a fight there actually. They're trying to dive in and Darien again, he's on the turret. He's getting taken very, very low. You can see the cataclysm comes out, but he does manage to turn it around and pick up Soas in the process, but that tur turret pressure's continuing. Cyanide on there. The meanwhile, that was happening as well. Peke also pressured that mid lane for a short while, so he's managed to get a bit of chunk of damage on the mid. Let's have a look at the items, though. So as he's gone back, just got himself a needlessly large rod, along with that haunting guys he's already picked up. That's going to hurt now. And he doesn't even have those tier 2 boots yet, so if he does decide to go for something like Sorcerer's Shoes, he built pure AP on his Elise yesterday. He may do something similar in this particular game. At the end of that, trading a tower for a dragon, Fnatic are going to be happy with that trade because dragons will respawn and they'll be able to challenge. Alex is diving again on towards Peke. I can see it on the mini map, but unfortunately for you guys at home, we're not quite catching it. It does mean that Alex Hitch is going to keep Peke back, and Peke just can't get close to this one. The ultimate's available in just a couple of seconds. That's exactly what I was about to point out. Deathmark is about to come off cooldown from Alex, and with the HP that Peke is sitting on, he will be able to be dived and killed. The one thing you have to point out is just how well Peke is CSing under all of this aggression. He's only 12 CS behind. After 15 minutes, that's a pretty good number. The same token, Genja, he's pulled himself back. He was 30 CS behind at one point. Now that number's down to 12 or 13. Oh, oh, Genja's returning to get some pressure on towards Yelistai. He does successfully avoid Hail of Arrows and then walks straight back into it. <laughs> Just going to get that slow effect back on you. I'm in proxy. He's coming around. There's no wards in that river from Fnatic right now, although N-Rated is just about to go and do that. So it does look like it's not going to be coming around. Instead, he's just going to launch himself into the wolves. Peke is going to pick up the blue buff. He's going to return to that mid lane. Darien, though, this is the big, big problem for them. It's happened so many times for Gambit. It doesn't actually seem to affect them too often, despite the fact Darien is 1-4 and four right now, getting completely destroyed by Soaz in that top lane. They always seem to find a way to come back. Yeah, so he's going to end up playing like running a distraction bot in these team fights. going to go try to land some cocoons, use that repel and that spider form to get in and out as, as much as possible. Take a look at the double GP10s for Enrated, but we'll get back to that in a second, as both Cyanide and Soaz have sniffed out a spider. 
And they're going to look to squash this fight under their big boots if they can. <laughs> Pings back and forwards. Peke does manage to get a little bit of a burst. And Diamond Prox, well, he thought about it, he could get on towards him instead. Look at this. Someone's going to help him out here because Peke can't go straight one for one here. And Alex is just going to work down that turret every wave that comes along now. And you can see that's going to happen. He's going to dive in and puts the death mark down. It will be enough, but has he been locked upon the turret enough? The Ignite's going to run. He has, and he got caught out. You can see he tries to get that little bit of lifesteal at the end there towards the minions, but another good turnaround. But that's the top turret also going down for Fnatic. So every time they're getting these kills back and forth, they are taking an advantage. And that's an inner turret going down. Meanwhile, down the bottom there, the Crescendo comes out but he got flashed from end rating turns around chain of corruption on towards Edward they should have enough damage to finish him off here yellow star gonna try and get in there has he got enough yes he does the plant from end rating picks it up now they're gonna get a great route on towards Genja and that saves the day but diamond prox he's coming in around the side he's not gonna be enough because so has and cyanide already there in defensive duty great play by Fnatic to turn that one around they got the top tower down Peke was able to stun Alex under the tower he took two turret hits and with the damage he put down it was enough to pick up a kill so as does not have his ultimate available if they want to go for this you know this dive at the moment but after the trade in the bottom lane they'll be able to pick this tower up uh, if they want to they may just decide to de deny the experience well, they're gonna take it that's three to one in turrets right now Fnatic starts to put the pressure on towards Gambit in this first game of the grand finals remember this is a best of five so many more games to come will we go all the way who knows Gambit at the moment though are under a little bit of pressure Alex Inch is doing a lot of damage every time he catches on towards Peke but those stuns just counter him so so well how will that work out in the team fights well we're gonna get there shortly because Dragon still not really been a focus target for either team no, not at all, but in terms of the team fights, if Enrated lands some more Stranglethorns like he's been doing, then I think that uh, Peck is going to have all the time in the world to get that damage down. When you combo with the Sorcerer's Shoes, Needlessly Large Rod, and the Haunting Guys of Soaz's Rumble, they are going to hit like a truck in these team fights, but they need to land those abilities. I was touching on Enrated's double GP10s. Philosopher's Stone and KG's Lucky Pick plus two kills. He is going to be very scary in the next 10 or 15 minutes because he's going to start building some ability power. On the other side of the coin, Edward has only got a Ruby Sidestone. So, yeah, he's got some additional, you know, uh, uh, health, but that's all it is. Five-man Fnatic, they're stacking up on the tower. The slingshot's being primed, and there comes the blob. Diamond goes launching in, gets bouncing around. Is he going to catch anyone down there? The crescendo didn't come out from Edward. It wasn't quite available because he'd used it in that bottom lane just before. It didn't have bullet time, so really that's a case of an ulti wasted for Diamond there. Yeah, he was bouncing without focus, to be honest, because he, he jumped into the fight, and the call came, don't go, let don't engage. So then he just bounced away and pretty much sulked himself out of the fight. So, uh, you know, it was a disruption technique. He did save the the turret at the end of the day but obviously they were hoping to get a little bit more out of that ultimate than just the defending the turrets Darian now in the mid lane it's Alex Hitch they've chosen said look Darian you're clearly having problems you're gonna be with the rest of the team and Alex is gonna be the man that split pushes this is what we saw them doing yesterday against SK Gaming Alex Hitch on Zed split push and ended up 2v1ing uh, at one point as well and he's gonna keep that split push pressure because frankly he can take down any member and he's already thinking of going for Peke so he probably has the ability to do so Peke's been saving up some money for the hourglass in the meantime the rest of Gambit are positioning their wards for Dragon you'll see a Real ill will, it will respawn very, very shortly. And in preparation for that, they're putting down all of the vision that they can to try and control this. Now we see in the middle lane, though, Fnatic are, they're continuing the pressure. So, like I said earlier, they're playing the map. Fnatic want the towers and they want the lanes in their favor. Gambit, they're poisoning themselves for Drake. I can see if they can get that one down. The pressure continuing to be applied. Like you say, Yellow Star, he's Keeps on shoving that, and Diamond has to keep going back to clear that wave. Alex Itch is definitely going to keep pressure on towards Peke. You can see he's trying to land those stuns. That's going to be so vital for his survival, really. The Seeker's Arm Guard's on now, so he's going to have a little bit more armor. But that Blade of the Rune King for Alex Itch, along with the Mercury Chance. He's purpose, he knows he's going to get there stunned. He up. He's going to die for it. We knew it was coming sooner or later. He does manage to get the stun down. And Peke, Alex, he's going to be enough. The Ignite's not going to finish off. Alex oh. Itch comes in <laughs> and just basically suicides because he knew there was no way he was going to survive it. And that means it's going to be a four for four in this Dragon area. You have to give props to Peke, though, because the moment Alex dived in there, he threw out the Thundering Shuriken, the skill shot Q, which connected. It landed. And that is why they traded those kills. The fact that he's down, it looks like Gambit, they 
they don't want to contest the dragon just yet. And look at all of the vision on that side of the map. It's just red wards and blue wards absolutely everywhere. Fnatic now, they seem to be setting up for mid. We'll see if they keep this pressure on. Darien gonna get caught out though, but Diamond has managed to engage. He's gone diving in towards this one. He's bouncing around the entire Fnatic. Flash is forced out from N rated as well there, but that was a game. Diamond, he's quite willful to just keep on using that ultimate to keep them at bay until that two mid laners return. And there's nothing else holding them in position. This is something that Gambit don't have in that Fnatic do. Once Let's Bounce is used, they're gonna rely on Crescendo to, to lock them down. Other than that, They've got a cocoon for, for, for crowd control. So it does look like Gambit have started off this Dragon. Fnatic are well aware of it. They have wards everywhere. Equalizer is up. Jarvan may dive in there. He's gone in. Cataclysm is available. Dragon has started to reset. Let's see when the fight breaks out. Clever, clever play from Gambit here. They realize they can try and catch him out. Oh, it's going to be ultimate. It's Edward that was the only one caught by the chain of corruption. Oh, managed to land the crescendo onto all the Fnatic, but neither team could counter it because everyone was avoiding it. And you can see Alex is now coming in. The poke comes back out there. You can see Peke hasn't got his ultimate available just yet. So now it's going to get taken down by the Ignite. Bullet time comes out, catches just the tail end of Fnatic there, and they're going to continue to pursue. Darian hasn't got any mana left, so he can't go diving in. But you bet your boots, Alex is will. He goes on towards Yellow Star. The bounce comes out. Out. One more hit, Darian. the barrier saves his life there, and Diamond Prog's not quite able to finish him off. Who comes out on top? Well, it's got to be Gambit. They did manage to get that kill, but it was a very tight fight. Cyanide managed to get Dragon in and amongst all of that, so yes, they managed to control the team fight, but overall, they lost in gold. In addition, a massive creep wave is being killed on the bottom lane by the turret, and Genja is stealing away the golems. He may decide to push this uh, tower down. We'll see how much, you know, pressure he wants to apply, but at the end of it, a very, very tense fight from both teams. They used every single ultimate, and there was no 100% clear victor. It was very scrappy back and forth. Genja purposely leaving that turret up as let the wave push itself. And the same with Alex Itch in that top wave. He's cleared out and just let the wave push itself. The wave does do a lot of damage as well. Takes a good half of the hit points shredded away from that one. So as will save it for now though. And the top two, it does go down from the wave Alex Itch had pushed in. So even game so far, 2,000 gold, or well, it was about 1,500 gold between the two teams, 10-8 kills, and currently you could not split this team right now. No, you couldn't split it at all. The one thing that did happen is that uh, Cannon has just finished his Zonia's Hourglass. This is incredibly, incredibly important. He is no longer a primary target for Deathmark because he will just simply Zonia's away from the damage. This means Alex needs to get through Rumble, Jarvan, and Zyra to jump onto Yellow Star or Blow it just killing a support. We'll see if Soas fences his chances here. He's working towards an hourglass himself with a relative amount of armor, so he may try to pick a fight. Well, this is the first time we've seen, obviously, Diamond using Zack in the LCS, going with a bit of a different build that we've seen across the course from those top laners, but the equalizer goes down. Alex H actually dives on this one. Is he going to be bait or not? Because you're going to see Diamond bouncing around and in disrupting them. Soas is going to get locked up. He will get taken down, but the Cataclysm comes out from Cyanide. Re realizes he's better of it. Chain of Corruption again misses there. Diamond Prox now is going to go towards Alex Itch, pops down Peke, but he gets sniped out by Yellowstar from range. And now you can see Yellowstar is going to keep pursuing on towards Diamond Prox. The rest of Gambit are just around the side, but while this is all happening, Genja, he's still shoving the mid lane. Peke made a mistake. He did not use his hourglass in that fight. He got jumped on and got killed quicker than he was anticipating. Genja, he's farmed up the mid lane. He's pushed it down, but it's not over. They've caught Edward. Edward gets caught out. Has to use that crescendo, but the Zyra Ultima immediately bouncing him up there. Is it going to be enough? Bang. Diamond Prox launches himself in there, and Yellowstar goes down. Now they're going to repel. They're getting like a sink the fangs in. End rated. He goes down. It's a double kill for Darian. The passive's not going to be enough to snipe them down. And that is all advantages. Wiped out the Fnatic again, and suddenly the gold swings heavily into towards Gambit's favor. So that 2,000 difference that Fnatic had is now in Gambit's back pocket. They just picked that one up. And Darian, who they shut down so effectively in the early game, is now 4-4-1. Four, four, and one. It doesn't matter that he's behind on CS. He's got the gold from the champions to make up for it. I'm taking a look at how Diamond Prox is scaling his Zac right now, and he's maxed out his Stretching Strike, his Q, and his Elastic Clean Shot. So he's going to start building up that damage from his W in the next couple of levels. Well, Fnatic will be able to take down this middle turret, equal in things, 4-4 in turrets now. And that gold, just 1,000 between them. The wave being shoved along the top lane. Genja, though, he's getting all the farm right now. He's definitely, considering he fell 26 CS behind at one time from memory serves, he's now 28 ahead. He's definitely swung that one around. He's working very much in the favor of Genja compared to Yellowstar. Yellowstar, though, with that snipe, 
Very nicely done on towards Alex Hitch in the previous fight. We've seen snipes, a number of snipes today as well, of course. You remember that that happened in the SKEG game. Alex Hitch going looking towards the red buff here. Up. He's going to find on towards Yellow Star. Puts that death mark down. He's just going to turn it around. Chain of corruption. Is it going to be enough? No. Pop is the word. He got obliterated. That was through a barrier as well. And the amount of damage that Alex has right now, he's shredding the armor from your Black Cleaver. He's stacking in the damage for Blade of the Ruined King. And he's going to instigate anybody that he can in these team fights. Yellow Star's going to need to pick up a Guardian Angel to survive Alex, well, to revive after Alex has killed him if he wants to make a meaningful, meaningful impact in these team fights. We see Darian pushing in. Alex is just shoving the bot lane as well. Okay. He's trying to keep him at bay. This is what he's been doing the whole time. And you know, it's actually nullified the entire Fnatic tactic. Because it's all about Peke split pushing. And Alex Itch, he's just beating him. And he's not allowing him to split push. So in fact, it's just straight roll reversal. And Alex Itch is the one split pushing on Peke. So Alex right now just has his death mark available. And he's sitting there on the side of Peke waiting to jump in on him. He's hiding in the bushes. And if Peke is in range, he may actually jump in. And it looks like he's going to go. Peke has got, and there's some damage. We'll see if he's going to go into the death mock or not. They realize so is is away and they're trying to shove down the mid lane but the whole of Gambit they're all going to come straight down to this bottom turret so as he's backing off as quick as he can he's going to have to rush straight down here the whole of Gambit slowly rotating around in towards this middle jungle but there is a lot of vision from Fnatic so they're seeing it happen and they're reacting quick enough. They're, they need the vision because of the immense range that uh, Diamond Prox can engage from. It's 1550 at rank 5. They've caught out the blob and they're going to go in. They've caught him out he's losing chunks of flubber. Is he going to go back and get him? You bet your life he is. That's a hundred hit points he's not gonna let that slide Peke though he's gonna keep that poke on towards Darian and now it looks like Sino we thought about going in there but really the rest of the team was not in a position to go for him and they do force Gamut away from this bottom turret so they hold on the turret they force him out of the jungle that's the most important thing and now all of a sudden Fnatic have positioning on Dragon it has just respawned a moment ago neither team has vision right now and you can see that by Gamut running over there so will Fnatic it's it's gonna be the next team fight the last time this happened it was very very close ultimates are available across the board so expect another very big fight Cocoon has caught Cyanide and let's see them go in. Cyanide's going to try and slide in and flash out a field to try and get the steal here. He has got vision. Is he going to be able to time it right? The whole of Fnatic are ready and waiting. Nope, not going to do it. And it was smited out by Diamond. So it didn't even look like Fnatic were 100% convinced on that one. They didn't have the best positioning. They weren't feeling comfortable at the fight. But look at Peke on Alex. Peke goes aggressive. Is he going to have enough this time around? Does manage to get the Ignite down. Already used that ultimate. He's going to get the Catholicism come out there. But he can try and get away from it. He's still caught out by the wall. But they're running straight into Miss. Fortune and she is wrecking face right now. It's going to be Diamond Prox. He comes around, bounces across. So as has to use that on his hourglass. He's going to get dropped down. It's not quite going to be picked up. It's Genja that takes the kill eventually. Can they chase the elastic slingshot onto Peke? Bounces him in the air and Diamond Prox picks up another kill. And now it's going to be N rated. He gets taken down by the support. Edward, can his passive snipe down on towards him? No, it can't. The bloodlust was too good for Fnatic. They chased one by one by one into all of the damage that Gambit was throwing at them. The only kill they secured wasn't to Darian, and that was a two versus one. He just held them back in that mid lane. And the rest of Fnatic threw themselves at the Russians and just gave away those kills. It was unnecessary. What it means now, with the numbers advantage, Gambit are starting on Baron. They're dropping its HP relatively low. Yellowstar does not have his ultimate available, but Barrier will be up in a second. He may try to contest this one. He's trying to see whether he can just stop them, prevent them. I'm not sure, sure if he's going to wait for everybody to get in there. Can they catch on towards him? USA can. Alex Hitch is going to turn on towards him, forces him to flash away and cleanse. Is it going to be enough? Alex Hitch does get taken down. And no, not quite. This time he does. It's Cyanide that gets the kill, but the Baron was taken. And it's going to be Gambit being the successors. And this time it's Genja that picks up yet another kill. Cyanide going down. They're going to be really happy about that trade. One for one, and they secure Baron for four of their team members. A win for Gambit any day of the week. They extend that gold lead to 5,000 gold right now. And something very important about that fight is how Alex used uses the death mark to stay alive a couple yeah. more seconds. Not only does he use that very well, he's just picked himself up a Guardian Angel. So he's got the death mark to avoid all damage for that second or two. And now he's going to revive if you get him down. It does beg a question, who the hell do you ban against Alex Hitch? Because you take away his Kha'Zix, he pulls out his Zed, who he performed absolutely sterling performance against SK Gaming yesterday and seems to be doing another fantastic job. You can see he's only got a 100 CS stretch lead over Peke in that mid lane, but more importantly, Peke can't, just can't stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with him anymore. He has to just try and avoid him, and who really can? No one at all on the map can get close to doing the damage they need to to take Alex Hitch out of the game, out of the fight as quick as possible. And while they're concentrating,
concentrate on that. You have Genja at the backside and Diamond launching himself at you. Yeah, there's nothing that you can do. They come at you from all sides. And that's something that we actually didn't touch on is just how mobile that those three particular champions are. You've got Darian on Elise who can just, you know, hop over the entire battlefield with Rappel. You have Diamond Brox on Zach who can literally hop over the entire battlefield. And then, of course, that Shadow Clone from Zed that's just going to be hopping in and out of battle, using that ultimate to become untargetable for that brief moment of time. So it's very difficult to lock anybody down. We do see a chain base being picked up there for Yellow Star, so I and expect that to become the likes of a Guardian Angel. Maybe a Randuans if he wants to, but we'll see how it goes. Right now, Gambit are stacked up as five in the jungle. They can see that uh, Soaz is in the top lane, and it looks like they've got their eyes set on this bottom inner tower. He's backing off and trying to run back in as quick as possible, we'll see whether he's going to be able to do that, because Gambit, they're shoving along that bottom lane, remember, with that Baron on there. They may be able to catch Darien out. No. Nope. Didn't quite land the roots on towards him and Racy trying to keep everyone back and it's Edward clearing out the top lane. I don't think Fnatic are going to want to fight for this one. They do manage to force them back for a short while. That turret is already down to half health. So the minion wave is de you know, deleted. They save the tower. They're thinking about going for an engagement, but Fnatic, their positioning isn't 100% ideal. If N-Rated gets a good grasping roots, they may go in. This is prime positioning for Equalizer, and this is how Fnatic brought themselves back against the evil geniuses. The slingshot was being primed. When you cancel it, you get half the health back as well as half the cooldown. So it's not the end of the world if you charge it up and go, nope, I don't want none of that. But they know that that cooldown is there, and it looks like Gambit is going to maybe choose to step away from this one despite the fact they have Baron they're still not confident enough to tower dive in towards Fnatic because if that Cataclysm were to land and the Equalizer were to go across the top of them someone would get melted there and we do see a couple of Harpoons as well as the Flame Spitter on Diamond there taking a lot of damage and now Cyanide's also keeping them back successful defense so far but can Gambit poke someone down can they pick someone off it doesn't matter because look at the mid lane Alex Ditch is there the entirety of those last 30 seconds Alex was shoving down that mid lane he's putting a lot of damage on that turret so you can see a number of members of Fnatic are responding to that and all this means is Gamma said well thank you very much the distraction tactic ran uh, successfully worked and you think you can split push Fnatic we can do it too yeah, they did manage to successfully maneuver them. They're going to go back. They're going to deal with that giant wave pushing their top inhibitor to it. So expect them to go back and buy and pick up a chunk more items. We'll see what they all get stretched into. Let's look across the items across the board. Jungler to jungler. Well, it's a big difference right now for Diamond. He's been involved in pretty much all of the fights that have happened in one way or another. We also see the fact that Darian actually against Soaz, you know, considering how how pressured he was he was one four zero he's now four five three he's been getting himself back into this game and we talked about it before every team that seems to focus so heavily on darren he always finds a way to get back in the game it's just the way the team works he pulls the attention away he draws the attraction and then he's this big juicy target that's underpowered under leveled you focus him and the rest of the team kills you and you know he'll find these opportunities very interestingly he's got himself a runic bulwark as does Diamond Prox's Zack. So they're going to be double stacking for one another, but not for everybody else. So we'll see whether or not those are the only defensive items they buy um, and how they're going to start leveling up. Across the rest of the board, we do see some ability power being picked up by Enrated, so he's going to start hitting a little bit harder. And again, Boots of Mobility plus Captain Boots for Edward. He did this yesterday, and it's something that I really like seeing more of. Yeah, going to help his team run towards him. Or, or into it, really, <laughs> since Edward tends to be the first man at the front. Very true. Trying to land that crescendo. Diamond Prox leaping himself across, maybe thinking of stealing away that blue buff. But I think it was Genja that he went to. So, looking like Gambit going to stack themselves maybe in towards... They're going to go for the Dragon first. That middle turret, which inhibitor will they go towards? The Baron buff, well, that has worn off. So that's going to be up in two minutes time. Dragon's going to go down and the gold swing continues in Gambit's favor. Just shy of 8,000 gold ahead now. In fact, it's just over 8,000 gold ahead. And Diamond Prox, while well, he's continuing to clear out everything in Fnatic's jungle, but Fnatic, look at this, they're making a surge up the mid lane. They stacked up as five. They realized that their opponents are a little bit spread out and they may decide to go for an objective. Baron is only up in a minute and a half, so they can't even shove the wave down and then try to rush Baron at this point. The one thing that we did notice when we looked at the gold is that Peke is 5,000 behind that of Alex right now, yep. which is a very, very big difference. And I believe, of course, it's three dragons that have gone to Gambit and only one that's gone to Fnatic over the course of the game. So it's something that we see again, that uh, Gambit just seems to have timing and control, and they know how to bully their opponents out of that position. 
Some items that have been picked up recently. Sona has obviously picked up that Oracle's Elixir. Going to be clearing out those wards as per usual. Sunfire Cape there on Zack. So he's got that armor. He's going to be split pushing. He's going to survive any physical attacks that are coming down. And of course, the Void Staff there on Kanan as well. So Edward clears out all of the wards. Pokes it out. Gets his own wards in. And Baron is set up and ready to go for Gambit. First game of the day, of course, was Evil Geniuses. They did go 2-0 to zero over SK Gaming. The apologies if I've just spoiled that for you, but, well, you should have been watching earlier on. <laughs> 27 seconds on the Baron, and will the first game be Gambits? Will they be able to secure themselves that first important victory? The confidence boost that it could bring, of course, Fnatic on that blue side. Heavily favoured by Evil Geniuses, despite the fact they picked up a win on the red earlier on today. We have seen many red wins, and dispelling that myth constantly that her blue side is the strongest for both Ooh, teams. Take a look at this. Darren ooh, almost walked into two members of Fnatic and talking about percentages and numbers, this particular matchup, 55% of the vote felt that Fnatic were going to win it coming into the game. We'll have to double check that vote if the numbers have changed. He goes a little Damasian standard down. Give some vision and Darren's just like, hey guys, what's up? I'm here. <laughs> Rest Dances of, around it. Exactly. Rest of Gambit are starting to respond as Baron is up. Very crucially, Alex is positioned off to the side. Fnatic are unaware of it. They have no vision in the tri bush. And Alex can take anybody he wants out of this game. There's the slingshot being charged. He's hopped in and let's bounce. He launches in there, bounces all over Peke. Peke tries to turn his ultimate, hits the Zonya Zarek. That's instantly, but a straight repel comes out from Darian. And Genja just melts him down. But soon, moment he lands. Flash crescendo comes out from Eddie Edward. Chain of corruption back on towards Diamond. Diamond may be able to get dropped. There, but he's gaining more health than he's losing. Alex H, Guardian Angel, is going to get popped. And the rest of Fnatic jumping away. But another bounce comes in from Diamond. This time, he might get sniped out. But his passive should be strong enough. Yellow Star is going to get caught out. The fangs from Darian pick up the kill. And Gambit now turn and burn. They're going to run straight towards that Baron. x Becker's ultimate did zip zero and nothing in that fight. He dove into the middle of Gambit. They split up completely. And they, got, they took zero damage from slicing Maelstrom. Two for zero in that engagement. And the crescendo only hit one person. It only caught Cyanide. But it was just because Fnatic were retreating so quickly that, you know, Edward wasn't able to get in range. Cyanide may be caught out himself. Caught out there. You can see Diamond jump straight in towards him. He will be able to slide away, but it's going to be this top turret. They're going to move straight towards. They have got that Baron buff, of course. The regen coming out. Diamond's just having fun, it looks like. Yeah, just hopping around. And why not? It's one of the champions that's just... The animations are so crisp and good. This is going to be the sixth tower going down for Gambit. They extend that gold lead to about 14,000 gold now. That's the second Baron of the game. And you've got to feel that they are in complete control of this matchup. They are, they've won every single team fight. There is Equalizer available, and there it goes. There's the Equalizer. That's going to get the slow on Darian. They may well be able to pick up the exit kill, but Genja is still there. Is it going to be enough to turn it back around? They're going to dive in. Cyanide's going to get dropped, and they're bouncing around. He's catching Peke out. Look how much damage that is coming out just from Diamond Prox there. And Gambit turned this fight straight away back in towards their favor in a 4v3. 4v3, they pick up a kill, and that was Fnatic. They picked a fight. Gambit weren't even sure they wanted it. Deathmark is available for Alex, so that ward is going to reveal him. We'll see if he's going to hop over, but at the time being, he needs some crowd control. He is there on the side, and it doesn't look like he's going in. Sona, meanwhile, in the form of Edward, is shoving that mid lane. There is a big great wave from Fnatic pushing along the bottom, but I don't think they're going to be too worried about that one. No, they are finally going to go back and buy, and Edward's going to keep that pressure, keep Fnatic in their base with this wave. So we'll see how long they can hold off. They've defended one Baron buff already. It only cost them a couple of towers. They've already lost towers on this particular Baron buff and kills. And do you see the slicing Maelstrom is up? Fnatic looking like they want to pick a fight, but it's difficult to fight a team that's this far ahead and that has Baron buff and all of the regeneration associated with it. I think they've bought enough time to get this blue buff. You can see Peke is going to come around. Diamond Prox is already there. Is he going to have enough to just smite it down? He will be able to. You can see the snipe comes in. He does manage to land the smite and he just jumps away, but the rest of Fnatic are collapsing in around him. He's going to try and let's bounce away from this one, but the rest of Gambit turn back around. Equalizer goes down. Should be enough. His passive goes down, but he's in the middle of a slicing. Maelstrom Pekka uses that Zonia's hourglass. Cyanide comes across. He's trying to disrupt them. You can see Alex in. Zonia's comes out from Psoas, but he's going to get launched in. The fangs come down, and the rest of Gambit close in around them. And Raid is going to see if he can take down Alex in, but they can't. And Fnatic are completely melted with a triple kill from Alex in. That's going to be the ace and possibly the game. Gambit were in complete control of that team fight. They didn't even get Zach. They blew everything, but they couldn't find the blubber. They couldn't blow up the chunks. Game one of the best of five goes to Gambit. Fantastic, fantastic performance. So, 